Let's go. Let's get it. Big time is showtime in action. Sean Avery, international sensation, international sex symbol, and international superstar, and my friend. Um, we met a long, long time ago. I'm going to give a little background about you, Sean. You're, uh, you're 40 years old. You were born in uh, April 10, 1980. You're a left wing, left shot, uh, although you could play probably every position. You're 5'10", 195 when you played hockey. And uh, who got you into hockey, Sean Avery? Uh, well, my dad played, my dad played, uh, my dad played major junior for the Oshawa generals, um, 1970 to 73. So I, I actually also played for the Toronto Marlies and, uh, they won the Quebec Pee Wee tournament. I'm not sure what year that was. He was born in 53. So that was probably 64 maybe. Anyways. So I, I would say my dad, you know, there was some genetics there but i'd get i'd say so sean <laughs> yeah i mean i'm a canadian kid everybody plays at, at a certain point so when i played i started playing and then i i guess i i you know i had the bug but i was a goalie my first year get out of here i'd never heard this yeah i played house league and i, I was a goalie and there wasn't enough action so uh <laughs> The next season, my I dad to... used to make me play goalie when the goalie didn't show up in my own in no goalie year. I was literally in no goalie year um, with Cooper Alls and everything. Like I just like would be in net, like with my my, my no goalie, no catch up. I actually a couple times he'd give me a um, I'd have a blocker and a catch up, but it wasn't as good to be like that because then I couldn't play defense as well. What about right. your, your your time as a goalie? Uh, it was house league. So that was literally my first year of any organized hockey. I don't think I liked it uh, very much. I'll send you a picture. It's pretty funny. I, you know, it was like, no, I, I wasn't into it. But then, then the following season, I went and tried out for the triple A team, which was, uh, I was eight years old. So that was the first year that you could play triple A as a forward. And then I ended up ma making the team, the Kitchener, uh, Kitchener, Kitchener Bauer Krauts, I think, was the uh, was what the hell's that name? <laughs> we were sponsored by Bauer. We were. Uh, what what, we, what do you mean Krauts? Were you a bunch of German guys? Uh, Kitchener is like uh, Kitchener Waterloo, Ontario. It's a big sure. uh, yeah Oktoberfest. That's where like Oktoberfest originated in North America. Yeah, big German, uh, big German population there. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, my so, mother's maiden name is Wattendorf, actually, and um, but I only have very, very, if any, German in me. But I'm, I'm all Irish. Are you Irish, Sean, or uh, German? Uh, or? Yeah, my uh, yeah, with a little bit of Italian. My dad's mother was Italian. Oh, okay, but, I didn't know that. You got a little, you got a little guinea in you. <laughs> a little guinea, yeah. What does Christopher Walken say in? Uh, oh yeah, in, well, I know no, that's no, my favorite. <laughs> no, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Yeah, sure. Dennis the Hopper Moors, the Moors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, listen, scene. Sean, you're uh, you're you getting drafted into the OHL. Your dad had a lot of genetically uh, gifted uh, traits to give to you, and um, um, you know, I'm looking at your picture here, and um, you're all business in the picture. And when I played against you, you were all business, which is what uh, gained the most respect. Which is why I looked you up in Manhattan Beach because I can't be friends with soft guys. Anyways, no. you're on, you're on the Thornhill Islanders. Uh, only for a game. What, what's that all about? Like, I, I didn't, I couldn't understand that. No, so I played mid, I played major midget in uh, Markham for the Markham Islanders. And then when the season was I thought was it was over, the Markham Waxers. That was the, uh, that was the. So I don't know the, my hockey though, right? No, there was the GTHL, which was the Greater Toronto Hockey League. And then there was the OMHA. So both Markham, Markham had a team in both leagues, the GTHL and the OMHA. So when I played major midget, I played for the Markham Islanders. When the season was over, the junior team called me up, which was a tier two junior team, which sure. was a league but back then. It was a very good league. Uh, and I played the final game of the season, and then we played the playoffs. I played the playoffs with them, and that's how I ended up getting drafted. I wouldn't have got drafted probably as an underage, but um, – the coach of the Owen Sound Platers saw me playing in one of those playoff games for the for the Tier 2 team, and then they ended up drafting me. It doesn't right? have your playoff stats that year, Sean. It only has one regular season game with four of Pims. Would you butcher somebody? Uh, no, and I wish it did have my playoff stats because I, like, fucking came in and lit it up as you. a 15-year-old, and that was a tough league back then. There were 20-year-olds yeah, in that Yeah, I'm not surprised, Sean. League. You're a very gifted athlete. And um, – 
but uh, yeah, and I forgot back then also, if you were drafted as an underage, you had to be drafted in the first three rounds, which is, I didn't know that that was true. No, I, I don't remember know that. Still, I don't no, know I remember that. Still. Yeah, they didn't want kids to just uh, give up their college and then just bust out right away. So you're in the OHL now. You get drafted. Um, did you get drafted in the OHL? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I got drafted. That that was uh, John Neville, who was the coach of the Owen Sound Platers. Uh, he saw me play in the playoffs for, for Thornhill. I, I think we were playing Bramley, Bramley Blues. There was a guy, Tony Tersini. I don't know. There was a lot of old school, like, sick junior players back then. Sure, sure. So uh, John Neville sees me play. He's the coach for the Owen Sound Platers. He drafts me. And when you get drafted as an underage, you're, you're automatically basically on the team. Like they, they pick you in the first three rounds, you make the team. So yeah, I moved to Owen Sound when I was 16. I lived with uh, Dan. What was that like, Sean, leaving home? And where were you growing up um, up until then? I was in like, Scarborough Pickering, which is a suburb of Toronto. Scarborough, so. Roy Gray, I believe, is from there. Do you know him? No, no. He was on my team with London. Okay, yeah. A tough uh, area. Uh, yeah, I think a it tough, was a tough town. Yeah, it's a tough town. Uh, so I moved to Owen Sound, and, you know, Owen Sound's got fucking, I don't know, there's like 7,000 people in the town. So Is it a, that small? Yeah, very small. I think it's one of the smallest. Uh, so everyone went to the games because when I was in London and they had great crowds, at least four yeah. or 5,000. Yeah, I think like uh, 3,500, 3,800 that, that would go to the games. So I moved there. I lived with Dan Snyder. Uh, Dan Snyder. Wow, okay. So if RIP Dan Snyder. If anybody doesn't Dan know Snyder. about Dan Snyder, he was the guy who um, unfortunately um, passed away um, – he played for the Chicago Wolves. He played for the Atlanta Thrashers, and he was a super guy and uh, had a lot of uh, lo lot of love when he passed away. He had, uh, it gained a lot of respect in a short time in his short life. So R.I.P. to Dan Snyder. Yeah, yeah, he was the captain uh, of the team. Also, similar type guy. Didn't never got drafted. Was a walk on, Stratford, Ontario. Well, wait, you uh, were you were not drafted, but you were like uh, you had. Uh, I believe one year you had like 86 points and Jason Spezza was like the leader. And like, I, I, I think you were right there with them. And, and to not get drafted like that just shows about um, how people judge people early on in life about like what type of people they are and what type of teammate they are. When like, um, it's not like, there's no brotherhood like people think. Like it, it's everybody's out for themselves. And, and now you're a junior kid, you're having a great season. Um, you're putting up big numbers. And uh, you had like 105 PIMS your second year in the OHL. Your last year in the OHL now, you don't get drafted. You got 55 games. You got 84 points and 215 PIMS, and you don't get drafted. What are you saying to yourself, Sean? I mean, I, I think uh, – so, well, one, it, you know, the scouts back then were like fucking dinosaurs. They weren't, you know, scouts Half of now. Half were fucking pedophiles, but whatever. Anyways – Go yeah, ahead. so, so um, yeah, I think I was leading the OHL in scoring at Christmas. And I you were. At a World Junior invite. But Tell us about really... that. Did that crush you? No, I, I, I think I, I realized at that point, like, the path that I was going, that everyone was always going to say I was a bad guy because I was too intense. Why was and... I saying that to you, Sean? Because I – hold on, little background. I read Sean's book um, – can you tell me do you have two names of your book so can you tell us uh, about your book a little, little bit and then I'm, let me take it over yeah ice capades and offside it's the same book they just okay it, it is the same book i don't know why you change names it kind of is confusing but maybe that's a uh a, a, publishers a, publishers all right yeah well, they don't know what to do so anyways no. i read your book i couldn't put it down all right i was in jail i was in the hole uh i beat up some kid who's got a big website now and people came here the other day and were like bringing me booze and presents and stuff because I beat this kid up who's got some website. Anyways, the, what, what's the website? I don't know. Josh I, I, Abrams is his name, but he, I'm not going to give him any more press than that because yeah, yeah. I beat some kid up in jail and they loved it. Anyways, yeah. um, I read your book, okay? Um, I read Theo Fleury's book. I've read everybody's book who put out a book, okay? Um, your book was by far the best book I've ever read, um, like out of all books. Um, your story is unbelievable. Uh, maybe, um, I'm fucking, I will tell you if I thought you were a bad guy or no good and I wouldn't fucking want you on my show, but, um, people have the wrong idea about me. And I think people have the wrong idea about you. And like, 
I watch something on like this and that, bringing you around to Dave Portnoy and this and that. Fuck that shit, bro. You're the real deal. Uh, when I went by your place in Manhattan Beach, all right, I, I, I didn't have any friends in California. And I, didn't, I don't like meeting strangers as an NHL guy and hanging out. So I yeah. went by your house. I gave you a note. And you were so fucking nice to me. I was like, how could I not like this kid? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, I fuck. I well, first of all, I lived. I, I lived with a with a real beauty, a guy by the name of Brad Norton. I lived with Norty in Manhattan Beach, and Who I grew uh, up with playing hockey yeah, against. Yeah, yeah. Norty was a man. He was a real <laughs> fucking. I played with Jeff in Pittsburgh, Sean. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was the only. He was out of the rink, thirty seconds after practice. <laughs> yeah, Brad Norton's one of the best teammates I've ever had. Like, and one of the toughest just, guys to play in the NHL, probably ever. He was tough. He was tough. He 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 wasn't as tough as he was big, but he, he could have been tougher. But he was just a, a real beauty. Um, well, when you're 5'10", 195, and as tough as you are, you bro- you bloodied up my nose. You broke my nose when we fought. No big deal. He hit me with a jab. But um, the, the, you you start to think that way about these guys. But they're just human. They put their pants on one leg at a time, like us, Sean. Yep. Yep. No, I I think uh, the 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 draft like. The draft is all bullshit. The draft doesn't mean shit. But it's like the NFL. You see these guys. There's more guys that make the team on an NFL team every year that are walk-ons than the fucking draft picks do. And I see you it, doing the football now. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know shit about it. Yes, you do, anything. Sean. Come on, buddy. I mean, I don't, don't be really humble. know. This is, don't, this is, we're trying to sell tickets here. Don't be humble. I don't really know the, the game of football. I mean, I, I Well, call me it. then and I'll help you out. I was a quarterback. Oh. Thanks. Situate? Yeah, I was a quarterback. I, I, I was telling the kid earlier today, do you remember my stories when I was talking about I played A-team football? I was always the backup quarterback. And then one time I got a chance to play. They were like, I couldn't make the team at BC High because all the kids were like 200 pounds, 220 pounds. And I was um, 93 pounds. And, What's BC um, High? What's BC Boston High? College High School. But it, it, oh. it's the best football program in the state. So I was going to be the top hockey player in my class but I was never going to play football there. Um, and I was the top baseball player. Anyways, next thing you know, um, these people are fucking um, like I, uh, telling me, oh, we got this guy coming to practice today. And we got to run because we only had 12 kids. I come from a small town. We needed 13 to have a full roster. So all of a sudden this black kid shows up with a do-rag and he pulls up in a car. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And he was 21. So the coach was like, oh, what is – actually showed up in the car the third practice. The first two practices, he got dropped off. And the first practice, the kid ran over our guy. And I was like, whoa, this guy's legit. He was 5'7", 135, but he was 135 pounds. And he had already played high school football. And he was from the Lynn, class, Lynn Mass and Lynn Classical. But he moved all the way – this is before the internet, before anything – this guy moved from the North Shore to the South Shore and joined the Pee Wee Football League. And How was old was he? 21. And playing against 13 and 14-year-olds. That's the and, truth. And how long did the charades, how long did he keep it going for? All right, so we went 8-0. Okay, we beat Weymouth. We beat Everett. Towns we would never beat if we didn't have this kid. Everett's the best football. Everett and Weymouth are two of the best in Massachusetts. Situate is division like five. So right. next thing you know, we're in the Super Bowl. I'm like, this is unbelievable. So the kid like faked the hamstring injury because if we would would have went any further, uh, they would have found out. Who yeah, he yeah, was. yeah, yeah. So we, wow, well, yeah. And then anyways, uh, he got caught because uh, he was um, putting like a um, uh, pawn on the kid. That, so he stayed at my house one night, Sean. No, this is not a lie. He stayed and he showed me pictures of him and his friends at the prom saying, this is my brother, Kelvin Bryant, who plays for the Redskins. He had us all believing that he was Tory Bryant, Kelvin Bryant's younger brother. He conned the whole town. And no one ever has ever told this story. And, Where um, is he now? He's dead. He got killed. Uh, he got murdered. Uh, he's from Lynn. His name was Tory Bryant. Uh, wow. oh, he said oh. his name. Yeah, so then when they investigated the fact that he had um, – ran up this uh, cable bill full of porn and uh, writing bad checks to people, stealing checks or whatever, because he was a hustler, a con artist. 
But yeah, his yeah. plan was, I'm going to play Pee Wee football. Pretty crazy, right? Wow. Who yeah, killed Canada's him? Canada's got a lot of store. Uh, no, no one knows. He, it's unsolved. A lot of unsolved wow. murder cases in this world because they don't want to solve them with guys like that. So listen, right. when you're in Canada, did you ever have any experiences like that? Guys like fudging their birth certificate? No, I don't even think anyone would be that smart in Canada. Like, uh, one thing about Canadians, they're very honest. Simple. I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you just do what you do. And, uh, yeah, no, that would have been like a crazy, crazy, crazy story for me. You know, there were a lot of kids that you played with when you were 12 or 13 that were much more advanced. Do you think uh, they have fudging birth certificates? No, I, th I just think that, you know, they, they just had a year late birthday and that makes a big difference when you're 12 or 13. But Yeah, absolutely. I have an October birthday. It was great for baseball and terrible for hockey. Right, right. So that, you know, it always, by the time you're 15, everyone's got a pl uh, an equal playing field. And then, you know, by Unless the time Unless they think you're a bad guy, Sean, and then you're done. Yeah, but the, the, even at that point... Uh, How did that come out? Because I read your book and I was like... I was, I, so I used to tell my guys, uh, my guys that, that wouldn't fall into line that I played with over the years, I would say, I will hurt you in practice. I'm going to hit you behind the leg. I'm going to break your ankle. I would tell kids, if you don't go fucking go in the four check or like, like start working harder, I'm going to fucking do something to you. I would, I would say that to guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, there's intense guys and there's intense guys that know how to control their intensity. Just because you don't know how to c control your intensity doesn't make you a bad teammate. It just makes you, you know, uh, a guy that fucking some teams that that's a good thing. Some teams, they like that when you get you, what you realize is once you get to a higher level, that becomes sort of the norm. You hold each other accountable. Uh, exactly. but it is, a uh, you know, I there's always this, that. There's always this like bullshit fucking, you know, play the game, all that nonsense, but it's all bullshit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is matter. all bullshit because when the player, so you were like third line guy, fourth line guy, second line guy sometimes. And then when the fucking playoffs come, they're sitting people and putting you out there. That's how it goes. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't, uh, a lot of politics, but I think it's starting to, that's starting to rid itself in the game a little bit because, you know, guys that we played with, now they're running teams and they, they see through all the bullshit. Like, I'm not worried about, like, Steve Eisenman doesn't, he doesn't get conned, you know? He sees through the bullshit. He sees through, you know, the, the way it used to be, it was old, it was an old school's, old boys club. It, it's not like that anymore. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. And that's, um, in any ways, it, it costs uh, guys like you a lot of money. So anyways, you're in the Cincinnati Mighty Ducks. You didn't get drafted, but you signed as a free agent. I know Chris Draper is a mentor of yours, and he was also some guys. He was also a guy I looked up to. Uh, shout out to Chris Draper. You were an unbelievable hockey player, and you were all in. And that's what I really focus on is guys that are all in. Tell us about your relationship with Chris Draper, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I just got lucky. We were from the same town, and uh, okay. I, I, I ended up in the same gym as him. And then – I think it, it was just a situation where um, I think he saw something in me that uh, he needed, which was Everybody somebody. Everybody does, Sean. He's just the one that spoke up. Well, I, I think he saw that. Same with all a... these directors and everything. You're going to be the biggest actor in Hollywood soon. I agree. I agree with you, Billy. <laughs> but he, he saw something that I think like I was going to push him, and he needed that. And it was just the perfect. There was a reason that we were brought together. It was and... God. We had a yeah, the big man upstairs. We had a good we had a good run, and you know, like having the ability to watch a guy like that and you soak up all the knowledge. What that, did you learn from him, Sean? I think you just see how much harder you have to work if you actually think you want to be a pro. Did he work harder than you? Uh, I think was he, he more disciplined? No, I mean, I I think I think. As you got great he, discipline, Sean, just from uh, watching you from afar. As far as hard as he worked, I tried to work as hard. Now, he was much older than me, so, he, you know, he was just smarter, you know. So, um, I, I would say that I worked as hard as I possibly could to, to make him work harder, and it was vice versa. You said something the other day that I listened to. I watch all your shit, and I'm a huge fan of yours, and I listen to all your shit. You said something the other day um, – that really resonated with me. And uh, it was something that he taught you. 
And um, I was like, oh man, I'm like, whatever. I could just picture it. Um, you guys at the at the track and 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 just you know, running is uh, like skating, but you're gonna you're gonna push your hips out to the side a little bit at a three quarter angle. Uh, can you tell us about the fact that I was in an until I hurt my leg, I had a four three forty sprint time and I had a five minute mile. Can you tell us about your running? And I know you really enjoy the running now, and I want to hear about it a little bit. Yeah, I run every single day. Uh, I think that's why like, you look so good, Sean. I think running is the best. People get in the gym, they worry about like pumping weights. Like running is a fucking archaic. That was what the cavemen did. Like you can't get a better workout than running. So I run every single day. Do you know but that I, let, let me interrupt you right now. Uh, yep. Guys that used to go behind their neck to do presses and pull downs. Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. did you ever see a fucking caveman do anything behind their neck? And they'd always be pulling muscles and everything. Sorry about that to interrupt. No, me. no, that's a very, no, it's a very good point. Even like with the squats, like people would, or, or doing those fucking stupid cleans, Olympic cleans and all that shit. That stuff's so stupid. It doesn't do it. All you do is just break down the cartilage in your knee. It's terrible for you. You got to work smart, not dumb. Anyways, we used to run. Uh, we'd run 400 meters, like quarter miles. That was our big thing. And we did it for 10 years. And, uh, you know, we just, we, we grinded our, our fucking runs. And Can you say that again? I'm sorry. I got the sound of my head. Say that one more time, Sean, so the kids we, out there can hear you. We ran quarter miles. That was our big thing. We All would right, run so uh, one time around the track. Yeah, one time around the track, but you I do fuck it, you, you know, up you, on that. <laughs> you do them as fast as fast as you can, and and it was like, uh, yeah, it was how we did it. So, anyways, there was on only a couple people in my life that um, uh, uh, Jason was like, oh no 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 no, um, he's the real deal. So I got the word on you before we played you. Um, you came to Wilkesbury. You were hurt that game or suspended? We suspended when you came Probably. to Wilkesbury. Probably suspended because I don't think I ever got hurt in uh, when I was when I was young, young. I don't think I got hurt. Yeah, no, I don't. I think probably you were suspe suspended. Well, you the way you were running around the bar, <laughs> you weren't hurt. Anyways, yeah. listen, I want to tell you a little story. Like this guy comes by on your team, Cincinnati, and he talks shit about you, and and then as soon as he walked away, that dude was a clown. He was a nobody. And Jason McConnell said to me, he goes, "Don't listen to that guy. I know Sean. He's a great kid." And uh, tell us about um, your experience with the Cincinnati Mighty Ducks. And uh, did you know Jason McDonald when he told me that? Because I was like, I mean, yeah. I was, well, well, yeah. I used to watch. I grew up in Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia, so I watched those guys play in the uh, in the Nova Scotia Junior League, which was like one of the best. Like when I was twelve or thirteen, sure. those those guys were playing in that league, and. You've never seen junior hockey like those junior games, like fucking Anaganish and, and playing Halifax. Like, uh, there's some of the best hockey. I still remember. I still – I wish I could watch some of those games on tape because it was, like – it was amazing. And I remember Jason McDonald from that league. So, yeah. What was but amazing about it? Yeah, I think it was uh, – it was tough. Guys were fucking good players. It was before – you know, the internet, it was like real fucking fights, like fights in the stands. It was just a tough, tough league, a very good league, good players. And I think guys were making money too. They were getting paid. Yeah, like, well, I went up to Andy Guinness, Nova Scotia, and I left the East Coast League at, as, as a 19-year-old, and I was making $375. And I was making, with bonuses, over $1,000 a week in Andy Guinness. Right. Sean, when you turned pro, you went to the uh, – you, you turned – I think Draper might have put in a word for you in the book. I think I forget about this. But um, you turn pro. You're with Detroit Red Wings. You're in your first training camp, and you make the fucking Red Wings right away, or you're in Cincinnati. Tell us about that. No, I went to I, – so I went to my first camp undrafted. I signed a contract. I went back to junior for a year. I came back okay. the next year. I played since C for a year in the minors, and then the following year I made the team. What did you think about your the the AHL experience and Mike Babcock and um, uh, I love Chris, I, Chris I O'Sullivan loved. and uh, also I think you had a few other Kunitz was maybe on your team, um, but I the only one I remember on your team was you because um, I was first line center on Wilkes-Barre's Grand. I don't know if it was your job to get me off my game, but you did. Um, I was more I was more focused on beating the crap out of you than I was scoring goals. 
how are you at, so effective as being – and you know what? If you would have got put in the role as a first-line center, I think you would have succeeded there. But I think with the, uh, the uh, personality traits that people think about people were against you, and I think that held you back. Uh, I know it held me back because then people were like, oh, he's a fighter. I'm like, I'm a fighter? What? Tell us about, like, um, like, no, like I, you I, – I, I, think, I think playing for Babcock was great. I think he, uh, you know, he hadn't coached in the NHL yet, but he knew what it took to play in the NHL, weirdly enough, and he, he fucking worked us hard. He worked us hard. What about you, I, though, you and his relationship, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I always liked Babs. He, he was crazy. He Any was instances nuts. where, like, it, it, like, I got places where and Glenn Patrick he, said something to me, and I was like, oh, he's right. No, he, yeah, I remember he called me into his office one night and asked if I slashed his tires, and I was like, dude. Yeah, tell us that story, because in the book, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I didn't – I was like, no, I didn't, I didn't slash your Why tires. Why would that, he think that? What type of relationship were you having with him at the time? No idea. And a, a great relationship. Like, I liked him. I, I did everything he said. He was, uh, he was a little, he was, you know, he played like Paranoid. mind games. No, I think he just, he, he would press your buttons, like, in a way. I don't know. But I loved him as a coach. So you're in Detroit. What do you get, yeah. your dog? Your dog? No, I got, no, no. Nash? Let's, yeah, he's crying, but fight, let's go. Want to take, take, take a minute? Want to take a minute? Because I got to pee. Can you take a minute? No, just ask me about Detroit. Let's go. All right, go. Detroit. Are, no, you asked. You're with Stevie. All right, here we go. <laughs> You're with Stevie Heisman, Brett Hull, Brendan Shanahan. Pa, uh, no, Datsuk wasn't there yet, no? Tell us who's there yeah, and what's Dat going on in, in Detroit. Yeah, Datsuk was there. Datsuk was there. Uh, Did oh, you hit him a, at all? Because Kovalev was there. Hit it. Kovalev you couldn't hit him. Oh, okay. So I used to hit Kovalev in practice and he used to get bullshit. No, you couldn't hit Datsuk. He'd fucking smoke you if you tried to hit him. Uh, he, he was a, he was like the with hardest. his stick or, or what? No, he just put his shoulder into you. Yeah, no, like, Kovalev wasn't like that. Yeah, no, Datsuk was a, was a, was tough. He was. Or tough. I I caught him with this. I mean, dude, I was tougher than Kovalev all day. So like, you're tougher than Datsuk. You don't think you could have ran him in practice and made a name? Uh, or they would have they would have been bullshit with you. No, 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 Datsuk, you could not hit. Okay. Uh, any, any, I didn't no know that. Could, I've... No one could hit him. Yeah, he's he was, uh, yeah, he was yeah, unhittable. He's, yeah, he's, he's kinda, unhittable. Who else is unhittable? Hittable? Uh, Chris Chelios, unhittable. You couldn't hit him. Nope. Not nope. even from behind. <laughs> nope. He'd fucking elbow you before he like if he felt you were coming, he'd put his his butt end up or something. He unhittable. unhittable. Yeah. So this kind of like Chris Pronger in a way. Yeah, Pronger was was Pronger was just Similar. so big, so big too. Um, but yeah, yeah. Who's the best player sick. you ever played with, Sean? Skill wise, I'd say probably. Ziggy no, no, Paul. no. The best player, bro. The best player. Oh, Steve all Eisenman. around. Steve okay. Eisenman. Okay. Yeah. And who's the best player you ever played against? Best player I ever played against. Uh, Got to be Mario, kid. No. But, I mean, I would say Lid Lidstrom. Or me. Probably. Or me, buddy. <laughs> probably uh, Lidstrom. Really? I like tell us a forward. I because I want to hear forwards. I'm uh, a forward. But the best goalie ever by I ever played against was Hasek. I mean, I played with him too, but he if you scored on him in practice or a couple too many guys scored on him, he'd just leave the ice. Really? He didn't Yeah, he didn't want he would never leave He'd never have a bad day. So if, if guys started getting hot and they'd score on him, he'd just <laughs> skate right off the ice and say, fuck it. I'm done. Good for him. Good for him. All right, so I got to go, Billy. Oh, you do? Yeah, fucking Nash is crying. Ask Can me you one. Let, let, ask me. Ask, let, 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 ask, let's ask about uh, the LA Kings when you got traded. No, let's ask about New York. Okay, tell us about New York. Glenn Sather, I think you should have it's, – it's, it was Slats there when you were there? Yes, he was. Did you like him? Yes, I did. He's a good dude. Yeah, Don Maloney didn't like me. They, I spoke yeah, up of – listen, I, I'll tell you the fucking story. Here you go. This is what happened with me. I spoke up to Don Maloney. I said, listen, I said, Mark, Mark, Mark Messier don't come to practice. You guys keep putting me from the fourth-line center up to, the, like, this first-line right wing. 
every – and then I go in the, in the room the next day and my, I'm still fourth line center. I said, don't you think it would be better if you just put me on a better line and I could start fucking potting some goals? Next thing you know, the team went to Montreal and, and Toronto, and, and they, they thought I could go. They didn't know, like, the, 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 the Flyers knew and the Penguins knew that I couldn't go there, all right? All right. You want to fucking – what, are you running my interview now, motherfucker? So, anyways, I go like this. I go, uh, this is emotional because this was my last days in the NHL. So, I said to the travel right, guy, Darren, what? this guy, Darren, I said, yeah. hey, I can't go to Canada, bro. I can't go. Like, I don't – you got me a ticket. I, I'm, I can't get on the play. I, I, if I go there, I'm going to get arrested. And he made a call, and he said, yeah, you're going to get arrested if you step on – so they sent me to Pittsburgh. I stayed with my girlfriend two days, Tammy, Tammy military. And um, then the practice comes. I'm still, I'm, I'm fourth line center. They put me out there in warm up as fourth line center. And then I come in and I'm healthy scratch. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Who is okay. the coach? Uh, Brian Trache was, was oh. horrible. Yeah. And um, so they, they also said, had a ninety-six million dollar payroll, I think, that year, and they were they didn't make. And the I made three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, right? And I was the fourth line center, and I fucking played the most for eleven games. I played the most on the team, and then I was out of the NHL. The next year, I signed with the Florida Panthers with Rick Dudley for three million dollars, three years, a million dollars a year, and Gary Bettman banned me. So that's my story. Why? So, why, why did Why, why did he ban, he ban you? Yeah. He, I got pulled over in Quincy Center for buying the hockey news. Mark Bergman said, hey, Billy, I'm, uh, Mark Bergman was my roommate on the road, all right? Like, yeah, I yeah. was like the cool guy on the team in Pittsburgh, all right? Everybody wanted to be my friend. I was friends with Mario, Bergman. Those are the two guys, right? So M Bergman comes, he goes, I want to live with you. And I'm like, all right, I'm living alone. I don't really want to live with you, but, you know. So right. he called me in the summertime. He said, go get my hockey news. I'm on the... I'm on the cover in a Jester hat. I said, okay, there's only one place. I And I was skating. I get off the ice. I go to Quincy Center. Mustache Mike, this legendary maggot cop from Quincy Center, gave me a ticket when I walked out. And then as I drove away, he noticed my sticker on my plate was bad. So he called it in. I got arrested fucking 10 miles down the road, going to my house for a fucking bad registration sticker. And Gary Bettman used that as an excuse with Dave Lewis, that maggot Malibu fucking scumbag doctor for the NHL substance abuse program, who right. fucked over more people. <clears throat> he fucked over Bob Pobrett. He fucked over Theo Fleury. He fucked over Matty Johnson. He fucked over Brant Myers. He fucked over Billy Lindsay. He fucked over Billy. T I'll go on and on. That's what happened with my career. So, uh, Sean, you're in New York. Uh, you're an international superstar. You're playing in New York City. Are you saying to yourself, I'm going to marry a supermodel and have the fucking – and no one's stopping me. I'm going to have a kid. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to be the man. New York's going to know about me because New York's yeah. your city, kid. You're fucking right. And you know what? She's downstairs yelling at me, and I got to go, and we'll do this again. All right. Love you, buddy. Good interview. Look Thanks, buddy. Listen, I'm, I I didn't know that. I didn't know that story. Uh, I got yeah, more gonna, stories, dude. I got we'll, so we'll fucked over in my that, life. We'll talk about that. And thank you for coming I, on, buddy. Of course, I love you. I'll I see love you guys. Too, buddy. See What's ya. your guy's name? What's your guy's name? Jackie uh, Moran. He say hello to Jackie real quick. He's a big fan. Yeah, please. Yeah. No, we were talking. Earlier. Thank you, Sean. Jack, I love thanks, you, buddy. Brother. I love see you, bro. Boys.